All right, welcome folks, Mill Spec Ops Monkey here. This is gonna be your sit rep, high noon, central time, coming to you from the great late, eh, great late, great state of Texas. And uh, it is gonna be January 5th, 2022, and we're off to the new year. And so uh, without further ado, let me hop over here to the boards. We're gonna be kicking it off in Skyglass this morning. Uh, just FYI, uh, you may notice there's a new button on the YouTube side for membership. Um, it doesn't change any of the other aspects. It's not going to affect Patreon. It's not going to affect YouTube. Uh, but if you want to join the membership side, you get to see the live shows on YouTube as well as the Q&As. And, uh, and, of course, you get to support the show, which is uh, much appreciated. So uh, there is that. And over here to the boards, you can see right now I just have the, uh, the ones that are kind of the meat of the matter selected. Most of the heavies, the electronic suites, uh, and of course the, the air refuelers, uh, we have quite a few air refuelers up right now, 24 KC-135s, which is, that's a pretty good number. Um, and then of course uh, you throw in, uh, you stack in uh, two DC-10s and a couple six sevens, five of those, and we're sitting at around a 30, 32 number uh, for uh, air refuelers up. And that's only, as you notice, on one side of the map. Uh, nothing really going on yet out here on the West Coast. So. Uh, very interesting little data point. I don't know what's going on, but there seems to be a lot of heavy congestion uh, just across the whole state, which is interesting. So let me do this. I'm going to deselect a couple things. I want to look closer at the electronic suites, uh, but we're just going to break them down a little at a time. So let me back out the tankers. And, uh, and now we're just going to look at uh, the heavies, and then we'll come back in on the electronic suite and the tankers themselves. Uh, I probably should have just done a build up instead of a build down and back up, but um, but I just wanted you to see the big picture relative to everything that's up right now. And so um, after I cleared out all of the uh, the the trainer debris, um, it uh, there's about 90 trainers up right now. So if I select these, just so you can see, it is uh, it's over just it just overtakes the board. So uh, but anyway, this is Skyglass. Just FYI too, if uh, uh, if you want a just a killer app that is now uh, available, uh, it has now released. It's out of the beta stage. Um, there are mods that are coming that are going to uh, give a little more of a curvature of the earth there, as well as uh, tracking TFRs, but those are going to be downstream. Uh, the baseline that came out is really clean, uh, and it's nice. It works just, there's no fiddling around. It just, boom, you want something that goes and gets it, and it's... Uh, it is nice to see, and so that uh, that has just been released in the last couple of days, and so uh, out of the beta phase, which I'm really excited about. But uh, right now, what we're looking at on the boards, these are just the heavies. As you can see, it is really concentrated over the East Coast, over the Central U.S. Right now, seems to be a lot of movement uh, of the heavy uh, aircraft. And then let me back out of those, and then we're going to pop in the air refuelers, and you can see they're kind of stacked. Uh, as we get into those. So here's the six sevens. Uh, and it's not pulling all of them. So that means there's some uh, activity going on over in Europe right now. So it, it will pull those in. Uh, but let me see here. I'm going to just try and find my, my tankers because they are a big number. And so, all right, there's the main. Uh, as you can see, a lot, of, uh, a lot of activity over just the central main section of the U.S., which is... Uh, like I said, that's that's uh, it's pretty busy. Normally, we've been watching them up here on the eastern seaboard. For some strange reason, we don't have that today. What we do have is a lot of activity over Kansas and and um, Oklahoma, Arkansas, out here into the Carolinas. Uh, we do have some activity out here. There are two actual uh, cigar thirty one and thirty two are out here over Florida. I'm not picking up the second one right now, uh, but they are out here as well and uh, doing some refueling. We'll look at those closer on the other flat map here in a second, but uh, there you have it, a little side view of that. Uh, and then let's get over to the electronic suite. I wanna show you what's going on here. This is uh, kind of an interesting data point as well. Uh, we'll go look at E6s, the E3s. Let's get over to R135s. And I uh, think that for the most part is it. We do have a one or two others, but uh, we won't worry about them right now. I'm gonna show you that separately on the map, but um, that is going to be our, our R-135s. Let me skinny this down. We're going to pull up the aircraft list so we can actually just get in and look at them. Now, Snoop 44, 
That's going to be over Kansas. That is uh, one of your R135s. Again, these are spy birds. Uh, Shiner 40 uh, out over Louisiana. And then this one, Vigor 27, is uh, that's an E6. So that's going to be one of your airborne command centers. And uh, that's uh, what they call looking glass. And uh, you can see uh, he's out in that same general area. Now keep in mind, while we have these doing the snooping, you also, if you build in those layers, you got a lot of heavies in the same area concentrated uh, and a boatload of air refuelers. So if you, when you're talking 30 air refuelers up, that would indicate you got a lot of fighters up. And I mean a lot of fighters because uh, one air refueler can uh, support quite a, quite a few fighters. So there's that. Um, all right, let me back out of Skyglass for a minute. Uh, we are going to uh, actually wait. Let me do one other thing real fast. Uh, this is what it looks like if you mix in all the trainers, all of the mast aircraft that don't want to be tracked. Uh, as you can see, today is quite busy. Uh, these trainers are just chock full between the Panhandle, uh, Texas, all the way through Texas up into Oklahoma. Uh, so they are off to a fresh start, burning that money for uh, pilot training. And uh, let me see here real fast. I'm going to pull up my fave. Um, it, uh, this one here, I was watching earlier today. This is called Brio 68. This is a new spy bird, uh, that I've actually tracked, uh, now today for the first time. Um, and it's a really interesting looking bird. So I want to show you what it's doing and show you the aircraft itself. Uh, this is the flat map. This is what it's looking like. Kind of gives you a different picture, but you can see all of the heavies, uh, a lot of congestion, some stuff heads southbound. That's just a lot. I mean, this right here and just this general area, you've got, uh, there's your E6 Airborne Command. We were looking at that when you're a uh, tanker, tanker, uh, two tankers uh, right here. And then that's a heavy lift, C-130J, another C-130, and then two more air refuelers right there in the general area. Okay, so let's break away from that real fast. Uh, we're going to take a look at this other, uh, this Brio here in just one second. Uh, just so you can see on the volcanic ash alert, uh, sitting at about seven, I think it is, uh, volcano spewing. Got one in Russia that's blowing ash. You can see that. Uh, this one in Japan is still pretty active. And then we've got, uh, looks to be five right here in Central and South America, which are kind of regulars. You can see the ash that's coming out uh, is not major, but um, definitely coming out. This one up here is definitely spewing. Uh, the reason it's disconnected is because that's an ash cloud at different flight levels um, at, or altitudes, as they would say, right? And so uh, they have, they've disconnected from this and are out there. So they just uh, alerting pilots so they don't fly into that, okay? Okay, so uh, let's get into the other stuff here. I am going to pull up real fast uh, my radar uh, just so you can see active TFRs. That way we know if a uh, flashbang's going to be on the move or not. Um, what you see in these little boxes right here, these are power outages. Blue is less severe. That just means there's uh, people are impacted. Could be anywhere from 10 people to, to a couple hundred. Uh, when you start getting into the other shades, like the reds, that's, uh, that's a lot. So that would be 17,000 people without power right now in that general area. Uh, but you can see that winter storm that blew through yesterday uh, has impacted the state pretty well. Uh, as well as other areas too. We still have some, some staggering stuff out here in Texas and uh, from that cold and then some stuff out here west of San, or sorry, east of San Francisco. A little earthquake there. Uh, and then this looks like a space operations TFR. We've got the existing over the brown zone and nothing really else to speak of that's catching my eye off the top of, let's see, yeah, everything else looks to be kind of normal. So let's minimize that. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, okay. Now, we were talking the other day about 5G. And uh, supposedly, and when I was reading the article that was being published by uh, one of the British um, uh, tabloids, uh, they said that today was the day for 5G, January 5th. And uh, evidently, that's not an accurate statement. Uh, the FAA and the FCC are indeed concerned about this. Uh, but uh, Verizon, AT&T, and everybody else are just uh, going full speed ahead. And so, uh, but according to this, uh, this is actually the launch is the 19th. That's going to be the rollout. Uh, and that was declared by uh, Flashbang himself. And so, um, but that is the date. It's not today. It is January 19th. So that article was off by just a couple weeks. So 
important, important note. Uh, we'll see. Is this going to be a Y2K where nothing happens? Or are we going to have some air aircraft impacted? Hopefully not. But um, there is that one. Okay. And then the other thing, too, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the movie uh, with Leonardo DiCaprio. It's it says, uh, I think it's called Look Up or something like that. Um, it's, it's kind of a... Um, a spoof on our government and how they're always trying to spin things. Uh, and there's a, a, actually a comet that's inbound that's going to impact the earth and the administration uh, is trying to figure out how they politicize it and make it, you know, and it's just, uh, it, it, it's actually funny uh, in a way that is not funny because it, it really reflects where we are today. Uh, even though the left is, uh, you know, putting out the movies, it is, uh, it was definitely not far off. Um, but, uh, so today is don't look up because that's what the government will tell you. Don't look up. Uh, we don't want you looking up. So, uh, but here this is, we've got a Russian rocket that's out of control and it's coming back in today. Now, latest reports that I was seeing, uh, put this bad dude coming in around Brazil is where they're expecting this thing to impact. Uh, but this is showing, uh, that, remember this is their Angara, uh, Angara rocket or A5 rocket. Uh, I'm going to show you there's another one coming in today, too, that is not the same the same one. So we don't want to get those confused, but uh, evidently uh, weighs about 20 tons and uh, it's expected to make, uh, you know, most of it will burn up coming inbound. Uh, but that that doesn't, uh, they're saying Brazil is kind of right now looking like the spot that's going to be the ones that see action on this. So. Uh, if we get over here to sat view, you will see this is actually tracking another one called the Jara. It's a lemur two uh, that's also coming in today, but that looks to be doing a splashdown out over an, over open water, uh, really not impacting much other than the fish. So, uh, but that is uh, it was updated on January third. So they look like they've got a pretty good um, re-entry estimate on it. Okay, so it looks like I've got a couple things coming down out of the sky today. And luckily, it's uh, January 5th was not the date for the airlines, and so we don't have any confusion there. Uh, and we'll be looking at it again on the 19th. So, all right. Now, we were talking about spy birds over in uh, this, just a minute ago, we were talking about this Brio 68. It's a new bird I haven't seen uh, before. It's kind of, kind of, it's got lots of pretty feathers on it. It's lots of colors, uh, but it is a spy bird nonetheless. It is a U.S. spy bird. And uh, I've just added that one to our quiver. I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, but you can see it is running in the general area. This is the Black Sea, Ukraine right here. And it's kind of running along that border, uh, gathering data all the way up into uh, Latvia, I think, is, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, didn't know we had a lot going on up there. But um, this is Belarus. And uh, so they, they must be really concerned about what's going on in this whole general region in terms of Soviet buildup. Um, I would say uh, uh, we are probably imminent on, on uh, Russia making a move unless he just does a complete stand down. Uh, I just don't see it happening, I'll be honest with you. But it uh, looks like this thing took off uh, out of Romania and back. Now, this is the bird. Uh, if anybody else wants to track it or add it to their tracker, it's going to be in 488CR. Uh, and I, it's a good return. I've gotten, uh, been able to look at some of the other flights and everything else on it. Uh, this is the assembly down here that's on the belly um, that has all of the tracking stuff in it. Of course, you can see an additional sets of antennas on the top other than what the normal antenna arrays are. Um, now, one of the reasons you see this right here, this little assembly, where it looks like the uh, engine cowing is actually separated, that is the thrust reverser actually activating in it. What it does, it's going to slide back and the doors are going to pop in um, actually around that engine this way. Um, and it's, it's just landed, it looks like. So uh, that's the picture. All right. But this is our new bird. Again, if you want to add that to your quiver. Uh, always good to have those kind of in your hip pocket if you want to see what's going on because sometimes you don't catch them flying. And it's a uh, little Bombardier Challenger 650. Okay, so there is that. Um, let's also take a look at Jake 11. That one was active today too. This is, uh, uh, let's see, well, it doesn't show what I was just looking at. So let me go back to the other one and this one will show what we're looking at. And uh, it's since made a little hop or done something interesting. but. 
Again, this is now actually looking at data inside the Ukraine. So this outer edge right here is the Ukraine. This is the Black Sea. And so it looks like they are actually looking at uh, the movements. When they come across here and they dip down in here, they're actually looking at that, that borderline right there. Uh, it's a very powerful technology. This is an R-135, by the way. Um, I do believe, I'm, well, I'm not positive. I think that's a UK R-135, but it could be a US one too, but it's uh, coming in and out of um, uh, the UK. So, uh, but they are still looking. That landed one hour, 56 minutes ago. So it just goes to show you that they are still very concerned with Russia and what's going on. Uh, and they definitely have eyes on that whole area as we saw from the other uh, spy bird to this one. Um, and then also, I just wanted to show you guess, a couple of NATO birds that are on the move uh, in the general European area as well. This one was uh, actually out of, out of Germany. It just took off and repositioned itself one hour, 14 minutes ago. Uh, as you can see, uh, looks like that right there is just doing some touch and goes. We'll look at the altitude to see if that indicates that, but that looks to be somebody that's uh, shooting uh, you know a runway and then turning around and, and uh, so that could be all we're seeing yeah and if you notice the altitude and the speed spikes right here that would indicate uh, exactly what we think we're looking at which is uh, touch and goes okay so that's where they uh, they come in they land they take right back off they land they take right back off so uh, probably a pilot trying to get his uh, get his rating in hours in um, they have to do so many of those approaches a month, I think, to stay current. And um, most of the time, they're just flying with autopilot. I don't want you to know that, but, uh, but every once in a while, they got to do the real thing. So, okay, this is a NATO 06. Again, uh, this one here, uh, repositioning. Uh, the last one we looked at was uh, NATO 40, and this is 06. So there are two NATO birds in Germany right now, and uh, you can see they both came out of the same location. Not even going to try and pronounce that, uh, but looks like they're repositioned and the other one landed there too. So we'll, uh, we'll watch that area again. I think you're going to see some more NATO flights as this area starts to heat up. And now to what really doesn't matter, flashbang schedule. Um, so today, Wednesday, January 5th, um, you can see that uh, you've got uh, Beavis and Butthead together. And um, looks like they're getting their, their daily brief. I would imagine that uh, they have Bob Marley in there with him just because uh, you probably need a second set of eyes uh, just to make sure that somebody on staff actually got the, the details that were needed. Uh, and then we've got this one here where he's actually talking about supply chain disruption task force. Uh, as you know, <laughs> just hang on to your wallets uh, because anything this guy touches, he's like the angel of death. And, uh, you know, he tried to fix the one in, in uh, uh, Los Angeles with the port, and it is a massive disaster. Actually didn't do anything, but probably caused more havoc uh, than was needed. So uh, that's the danger. If you don't have the range and depth uh, on your staff to actually execute um, your desires as commander in chief, um, you will more than likely find out that you're gonna fail more times than not, especially when it comes to supply chain, because um, supply chain is a very fickle beast, so to speak, and so, um, it uh, really, depending on how you measure things, you can start trying to manipulate stuff and make situations worse, significantly worse very quickly. So speaking of that, let's get over here and look at the marine traffic real fast. Uh, I'm gonna kick us off first in China. I just wanna show you, uh, even though we look at Long Beach and Los Angeles and we have 100 boats stacked up and oh boy, it seems like it's really bad. Uh, take a look at the amount of cargo ships, and this is strictly cargo, that are on the move, inbound or outbound, out of China. Um, and keeping in mind that these guys supply a lot of stuff around the world. Now, these ones that are parked out here are sitting, waiting to come in. They have a COVID thing where they are actually have to uh, sit 14 days in the port before they're allowed to come into the port. And so that has impacted the additional supply chain uh, so things that are coming in that have already taken 75, 80 days to get there because of the delays in outbound ports um, have to come in and park for 14 days uh, before they'll release the cruise. And so um, it's very interesting. Uh, so you've got this giant uh, just 
mass amount. There's there's probably a couple hundred ships just in here and in here waiting to be able to come into the ports. And then, of course, these are all into the ports, as you can see, racked and stacked. And uh, these are ships that are on the move with these little arrows coming outbound. And uh, also keep in mind, too, they've got a container shortage. So um, pretty, pretty wild, actually pretty wild when you look at that, the big picture. Now let's get over here to Los Angeles and just kind of, uh, it kind of pales into comparison, but um, uh, look at all the traffic out across, just zinging across the ocean there. Uh, right, here we go, Los Angeles. As we kind of zoom in, you can see this is the LA port. Uh, these are boats that are actually rolling back out. These are going to Hawaii, it looks like. And uh, Long Beach port is still stacked. I mean, that's probably 100 boats uh, still in the area. These are their dots are parked, waiting to come in. And then these that are moving are actually inbound. Uh, you can see that one's coming in from uh, Hong Kong, it looks like, into Los Angeles. Uh, these are a couple that are just sitting out there uh, waiting to be cleared to come in. So um, nowhere near what we're seeing over in China, uh, but uh, still nonetheless pretty backed up. So, um, okay, let's get over here to NASA real fast as we're moving on through. Looks like there is no active uh nasa flights at the moment so we will uh, move on uh one of these days we'll click on this and there'll actually be uh, some activity and we can kind of drill down and see what's going on but if you're interested in looking at the nasa stuff they have a uh, NASA, nasa airborne science program you can actually go over here to airbornescience.nasa.gov to a tracker and it'll pull up you can look at all the different aircraft and all the stuff that they've got going on um, here in the u.s and uh, and you can actually track the flights so it's kind of cool all right, uh, let's look at the misery map real fast as we get through. Uh, looks like things are really not too bad. 345 delays, 127 cancellations. I guess if you're one of the 127, uh, it's, uh, it's not good. Uh, but uh, looks like this stuff is kind of washing off the eastern seaboard. This looks to be a hot mess, but not anything they're not used to dealing with up in Chicago and that general area. And then Seattle's got some uh, weather moving in, so that's going to probably drive that number right there. Okay, uh, over to Department of No Justice, N721AL. Uh, just so you guys know, this one, the last time it went up here to uh, Toronto, Canada, it actually was going in for maintenance. My guess is that this bird has um, exited out of Manassas and gone into here. It's going to be there for a little while. I don't know whether it's an ABC or a D heavy check, uh, which would be a D check. Um, depending on which one of those it is, more than likely it's not an A because that's something they do on ramp. Uh, B, they probably still do that there in Manassas. But uh, you get into the C's and the D's, that's when they start opening things up uh, from a, a maintenance perspective and, uh, you know, changing out things like uh, landing gears, landing gear seals, uh, landing gear itself, dropping engines, just depends um, on what is due for schedule. But... Uh, that could be parked there for a little while. So we'll watch it and see when it comes back out. Um, I expect it's there for um, at least probably a couple weeks. So uh, we'll keep her on it when it re-enters re the schedule, okay? All right, now over to Biggs. This is actually today. Just so you guys can see, the board is insane. Uh, lots and lots of activity. Uh, we've got some interesting things that are starting to bubble into this, and I don't know what to make of it just quite yet. Uh, these are all regular regular aircraft, okay, when you see that. Uh, but what are not the regulars, when you start to see these, um, the military side, because it's a military base, when they're rolling in and out, they don't really announce the aircraft type, okay, on the boards. When a commercial bird comes in, that's when you see this aircraft type. So really, to kind of hit the short list, you're looking at this column, okay. And so... Uh, just to show you, this is the departure. We've got one air, um, that's going to be, uh, I think that's Allegiant, uh, AAL. No, it's American Airlines, sorry. Um, uh, American A320 Airbus headed from there over to El Paso. So that's kind of re-entering service, it looks like. And then uh, that's literally a hop, skip, and a jump over. And, uh, and then this one here, this is uh, Omni, which is a 777-200 headed up to Baltimore, Washington. Probably going to be troops, if I had to guess. Now, these are the ones I'm not full-on sure about. Uh, we have a bunch, if you notice, coming in from March Air, um, Air Reserve Base. The question is, 
whether or not they're tied. Uh, these Delta Airlines, normally that's, that's not tied to Amazon, although they could be. They could be Amazon flights where they just charter something with an airline. The airline moves a lot of uh, U.S. Postal Service stuff on a regular basis. So um, could be that, uh, but these spas are definitely not. So you've got these spas. This is going to be Sierra Pacific coming in from March. March is one of our locations. If you get over here uh, to our map and you get into uh, the base locations where they are, um, and this is it right here, March Air Force Base or Air Reserve Base, that is a place they've been putting poppies, okay? And so the red bases here are poppy, uh, sorry, are military bases. The yellows are detention centers uh, tied to immigration. The blues are foster care, okay? So if you'll notice those. Uh, but this is March. So more than likely, uh, these are birds coming inbound um, that will go somewhere else. We get over here to spa. You can see that one's actually going returning back to March. So they could be grabbing some more poppies and bringing them into March uh, before they rehome them. Uh, the Delta Airlines could as well. I mean, this is a return flight back and forth to March. This one's going to Ontario, uh, California, and this one's going to LA. So I'm thinking these are uh, coming inbound from that one location, taking some poppies outbound. Uh, we are about to see what I think is going to be wave number four um, of Afghanis coming into our country. Um, may or may not, because I still think they have them staged uh, in some of these other countries in Europe. So we'll see what happens. Uh, it also could be them just emptying out um, the locations because um, that uh, is kind of what I'm thinking is going to be the indicator here. Uh, as they begin to vacate these spots, they're keeping them open. And so that would indicate that uh, they're going to refill them with someone. <laughs> and so that's why we're paying attention. That's why I have these things mapped out. But the, uh, the main ones you want to watch are the red bases, um, 27 of them to be exact, which is about uh, 2x the number of World War II numbers when we were um, doing re-education camps for the Japanese, German, and Italian Americans. So... Okay, so that's Biggs. I also want to point out too, what I am noticing, if we go in here to the arrival board, um, this is a camber flight, uh, which would indicate troops. That is definitely coming in from Sophia, 777-200. Uh, These are camber flights. Those are troops, 100%. I'm not so sure about that. That's probably not. That's Eastern Airlines. That's not going to be. Those are on Monday and then on Tuesday. So we definitely have... Um, troops getting moved around and shuffled right now. I will tell you most of the flights that I see appear to be going to uh, Europe, okay? And so uh, I just don't post them on here um, because it's not the right thing. Don't wanna do that, okay? So if I get into uh, actually departures, let's go over here real fast. I'm just gonna bump it down. Uh, you can see these uh, Baltimore, Norfolk, and Seattle. So those are where they uh, domestically moved them, and then from there, they probably went international. And uh, same thing here, Baltimore, and then that one is American Airlines El Paso. We already saw that. All right, let's get over here to Swift Air. Uh, as you can see, we've got uh, flights uh, Alexandria to Phoenix. That's a prison. We know that 72-hour holding facility. Laredo to Port-au-Prince. That's somebody getting exfilled out, uh, out of the country. Um, and then we've got uh, several others, it looks like, uh, going to Louisville, Kentucky. Don't know, that uh, could be um, doing a pickup. Uh, a lot of these Swift Air flights are, almost all of them are immigration related. And so when you get back over here to our map, that's why we're, we're watching these flights as we map them, uh, giving us new locations. So that's why we watch the Swift stuff, okay? Now, uh, the other one we're gonna look at here is World Airways. Uh, that flight, well, it was on there. It's not there now. Uh, we had one flight that was headed into the Dominican Republic, and uh, that has since landed, and there's nothing else. World Airways is not a major, uh, major uh, airline. It's pretty small, actually. Uh, but this is one It's scheduled. You can see it's going from McAllen to Laredo. It's just shifting assets back and forth from one border town to another uh, as they jockey them. Um, most of these flights, as I said in our last sit rep, are being utilized by uh, U.S. Marshal Service or Bureau of Prisons. And so, um, and I've confirmed that through other articles that were written up. We've showed them in our sit reps. Uh, so 
Um, I don't know that they are moving women and kids in the middle of the night, although there could be some of that. But uh, for the most part, these are uh, prison birds, so to speak, okay? All right, over here to Guantanamo Bay, been a little active last couple of days. Uh, we did have a REACH C-17 come in from uh, Tacoma, Washington, which that was probably some troops coming in. This is about the time of year when you start to see them rotate in and out. Uh, they do so every three months. Uh, this one is not, this is an interesting one. It's en route coming from Clearwater. Don't see that very often. That is a 737-900 from United Airlines. Um, so I don't know what that one's all about, but it looks like from there, we've got another flight that's headed outbound to Jacksonville, 737-800. That's a different bird, folks. Um, but if we get over to the arrival board, I will tell you too, I did catch a Shark 67 over the weekend, which is a C-130 Army bird um, rotating troops out. So that did bump in. It's not going to be on the board. But these little uh, Embry 145s, haven't seen those on there for a while. This is our normal Tuesday, Friday. Uh, but this is why I point out the ones with the United Airlines. First of all, uh, we don't have anything on the docket uh, publicly um, until uh, the 10th of, of January. Now, the other piece too is, uh, this is one that I stumbled upon. <laughs> Guantanamo Bay Migrant Operations Center. Uh, yes, it does exist. It is a real thing. And so this may be why we see some of those commercial flights coming inbound. Uh, because they are putting some folks out here. These would probably not be good folks. Um, uh, so anyway, there is that, okay? So that's why I bring it up, all right? Uh, last thing I wanted to point out before we break away, I know we've hit our 30 minute mark here. Um, wanna just show you Kazakhstan is uh, going down right now in terms of protest. And it's actually tied to fuel, increased fuel costs. They're saying the prices of fuel are going through the roof right now, and people are pretty mad about it. Um, and so uh, they've been cutting the dogs loose on them. It's getting kind of crazy, but you can see dudes are, uh, they got their shields up, ready to go, and they've been mixing it up pretty heavily uh, over the last 24, 48 hours. So just wanted to point that out. There's a lot of that going on. I've seen uh, videos from Ukraine. I've seen them. A lot of other countries right now that seem to be uh, saying enough is enough. We're not going to take it. So um, continue to watch it and see what happens. But uh, area, I mean, the world is just going mad right now. It's crazy. So, all right, listen, that is going to do it uh, uh, for this one. Um, and this was, the, by the way, this is just the uh, air refueler I was talking about earlier. Remember, China's here in Cuba. Okay. And so that's why you've got this refueler out here. You've got a fighter presence clearly in this general region. So, okay. Now it is gonna actually officially do it. So you guys, uh, listen, be safe out there, keep your powder dry, and most of all, stay frosty. God bless, monkey out. Check out the latest gear and products at monkeyworksus.com.